Hey, America. What's up? Chef John Get Go Mate. Uh, we're making buffalo chili. And this is Chef John the Ghetto Gourmet 2, which means that I've done like a way, a whole lot of videos, and I'm trying to start organizing this stuff so, for you guys. And also, we're going to move into more advanced stuff. Yes, we still have not finished soup stocks and sauces. If somebody noted that and said you haven't done hollandaise, you are correct. And I'll get the dang hollandaise done when I feel like it. <laughs> I'll get it done as soon as possible. I got some egg product. Just a minute. I got some egg product and I want to make a quiche. Um, and I have uh, mozzarella um, and some uh, and a little bit of spinach and some mushrooms. And I'm going to get some nice beef, or, or I mean, uh, some nice pork product, maybe bacon, some honey bacon, or not honey bacon, um, or, or, or maybe something uh, exotic, uh, I don't know, um, pancetta, or um, uh, prosciutto, um, hams, or something like that, um, to saute up with the mushrooms and the onions and the garlic. And the, I always put a little wine, is what you really want to put in a little quiche, but I use lemon juice, pickle juice combo, you know my thing. Um, but, uh, man, you put a little bit of wine in your quiche and you're just like so on in the eggs and all that. Just like a half ounce too, right? And, um, and if um, people talk about wine and they're alcoholics and, I, and they say, I don't want to ever want to cook with it. or Yeah, and the flavor comes out and I understand that just the smell of it can bother you. I had some deodorant that smelled like dope the other day. I had to like throw it out. <laughs> like... No, that was not okay. <laughs> you got to know to know, man. I'm just being real with you all. All right. This is it, you know. All right, so I've got a nice, good pound of buffalo. And buffalo is really lean. And see, normally with chili, you'd be like, this would be a big pile of cumin. I'm doing this very light. Very light on the cumin. Um, and then I'm going to use a little bit of the... All right, this is a smoked chipotle, and we're just going to use a little smoked chipotle. All right, we got a little salt in there, and um, then uh, a little liquid smoke and a dash of Worcester, and um, a little bit of garlic. I'm just going to put a hair of garlic in there, not too much, but I want the I want the rootiness going on of the rooty aroma of garlic I mean that looked like a lot but more I mean it really wasn't once this creates into chili so also I'm gonna break open a can of beans I mean here's our beans cooked off yesterday um, I'm gonna I'm turn this on <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bust out this is good product Winko I like to tell you guys when you can get a really cheap product that's a really inexpensive product that's a good product so I'm gonna use whole peel plums I'm gonna do a little hand crushing thing that that I do, um, yeah, that was, that was my elevator. <laughs> There's a little dip in the floor there. <laughs> little dip. <laughs> yeah, man. So, yeah, man, something really, really, really cool happened. Uh, uh, besides, uh, um, I got a group out there, they're really cool people, and um, they're talking about, um, you know, uh, checking out some of my cooking ideas, and, um, I, I kind of have an idea for them, which is kind of pretty big, but I think it's a cool idea, which is um, I, I had the contact so we could uh, do an annual uh, Eugene Foodie meeting and um, create it ourselves and set it up at Lane's Green College. And, uh, you guys are all the way over there. Set up at Lane. <laughs> I do that often. Huh? Set up at Lane Community College. Um, I know the vice president and all that. Or the, uh, that would be better than the Hilton. Uh, I know both kitchens, too. See, 109 in the in the in the um, uh, the catering kitchen are right off of the, um, the the rooms. That's the way they're set up, and we could have a huge banquet, and we could have live music, and and we could make it cost efficient for everybody. If especially if we um, we get some local chefs who like to just come in and like you know uh, showcase some of their talent, and we also have people in the group um, who um, besides myself. Um, I've seen already a wonderful talent. Um, so I thought I'd just throw that out on the show because, you know, that's the kind of guy I am. I kind of speak my mind. Get her done.
So the salted butter was all 279, but the unsalted butter was all three something. And thing is, I like sweet butter because I do all this cooking, you know. I, I, I want my butter, I don't want the extra salt put in it. I'll put the salt in myself. I have to buy a little. All right, one of those. And then, 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 then. Um, this. I made some sausage links earlier, and I had the fat from that. It's just a little bit in the pan, and I had them just a little while ago. Uh, well, not just a little while ago, earlier today, but um, that's just a little extra fat that I was looking for. A little bit of um, something pork-based. Uh, my fats in my fridge, i got to really check them out well, because... Um, uh, one of them went rancid, and I have to like take a look at them all and figure out which one went rancid and then throw it out because that's dangerous. Rancid fat can get dangerous and get you really ill. And that's what I think happened once when I made a batch of beans was I used some fat that was rancid, and um, it didn't stick well with me. <laughs> I mean, beans have their own little you know agenda anyways once they get in the system. You know what I mean? It's not like you rent beans, you know what I mean? It's like you rent a musical group when you get beans, right? You're like, oh, hey, yeah, these things will work. <laughs> like corn, corn just, you know what I mean? You're like, hello, checking in the hotel and checking out, right? <laughs> the beans wake up in the morning, they're like, hey, yo! Yo, what does smell? You laying in the bed. Get me up here. What's that smell, man? <laughs> Getting all close on you. What's that smell, man? You in the bed right here. Hey, man. Yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> What's that smell? <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, I'm in a really good mood. Um, all right, you guys are on my show. Uh, I got a call from a director of a really cool movie, and I'm going to say the movie's name because I like to sponsor the movie in the sense that I sponsor the idea behind the movie. I, I spon I, I'm like, man, the guy who, who like did this, look, here, we're chopping this up, and then I'll get back to that, all right? Because I want to pay it out in proper respect and say it out of you know what I mean? So anyways, and um, so you guys know I have a I have Thor blog. That's all listed in my tags. Uh, down below. Um, so, um, I watched this movie called Dead in Five Heartbeats, Sunny Barger Productions. Really nice movie. Um, low budget movie, but still, there was some stuff in it you were like, man, this is like really, like they did a really, really good job of it, right? And so, um, I find out they got a web page and all that. And I've been like, you know, I support 81 because I got some 81 blood in me. You know, if you've read my blog, you're like, oh, all right, Thor. You know what I mean? Chef John, a.k.a. Thor for a reason, right? Well, anyways, you know, and that's the better side of me. I talk about that if you read my thing below. Well, anyways, man, so um, I talk about community and all that in my blog. And, and I was like, you know, I shot I shot um, them some stuff, right? Well, there's Sonny Barger, the legend himself, right? The father of all motorcycles, um, uh, really, clubs. And the whole chopper culture. He is the it of motorcycles. You know what I mean? And he co-produced this movie with this man. And um, we're going to use a little olive oil just because I need the oil right now. Um, and the man's name is uh, Jeff Santo. And uh, so I got a, uh, a message that said uh, we'd like to... Uh, here it is, guys. I mean, like, you know, I picked three people in the world I like to be like. It's kind of a strange tree, but if you look at it and understand me, you get it. All right, so Nelson Mandela, rest, rest in peace. That's why I said his name first. Um, Sonny Barger, okay? He's like, okay, two, two men who came up and fought their own way and, you know, were rebels in their own way, right? And Bill Cosby, because we all got to laugh, right? So to get this, like message from somebody who I consider like a mentor and an idol and somebody who I'd like, you know, I mean, 
if you don't know, you don't know. But like brothers ain't like once you get in the club and life and you really understand these brothers, they're like man, they're deep. They take care of each other. They have this higher sense of moral ethics that just it it, it is the club. All right. And that's part about being in the club. It, you know, there's people don't know about that. You can go read Sonny's book and read it. You know, you'd be like, really? You know, you guys got to stick to all that? I'm like, yeah. And we got to back each other up. You know, well, you know, I'm not one of them. I don't got a patch. You got to say that right out now. So I was like really honored that they picked me. Um, and well, they got a message. They sent me a message that said, hey, we'd like you uh, like to. Um, do an interview on your I Thor blog and uh, send us some questions, man. I'm like, man, dude, that's like, you know, <laughs> that'd be like some of y'all, Tupac, be like, hey, y'all, you want to rap for a second, right? You know what I mean? Check this new, you know, I'm just saying, man, it's really cool that I get this opportunity. And uh, check out Dead and Five Heartbeats. Uh, Sunny Farge Productions. And dude, when you check it out, man, um, look, if you in the know, you be like, these are all one percenters, these are all bike clubs, these are all real clubhouses. These are all like real the bikers like let these guys into their Alright, only Sonny Barger could pull this off. This is part of a like interview that I heard, right? But this is the real truth about like biker kingdom, man. You know, one man who could go into all these houses. And make this happen. And it became a good movie. It's a good movie, man. And, um, you know, they really represented um, bikers well. And they represented something deeper in it. And, like, I, I, I sent one question in. Well, I'm not going to give up my questions or anything. We're, gonna let, we're just going to let that roll. But I'm just saying, um, we talk, I, I sent some questions about the movie, uh, um, uh, about what their next projects, you know, you know stuff like that. Um, but I tried to get to a heart and meat of something. And the heart and meat of that is what the biker community is and how it's perceived and been torn up by Hollywood and disrespected, right? And then when you finally really meet these men, even though this movie is a hardcore movie, not giving any of the movie away, but it's hardcore, right? Because it represents, it says this is the life, man. And you're like, oh, you mean hardcore and drugs and all this and Watch it. You'd be like, there are subtleties upon subtleties in this movie. And then there's this, like, real strong uh, expression of, like, brothers, right? Because when uh, you get a bunch of bikers who are all brothers stand by side, man. You know, I don't want to be, like, I didn't think about being involved with bikers club and all that. You know, I was just a biker. I've been riding since I was like 18, 19, 18 and a half. I hid my motorcycle at my friend's house because my parents wouldn't let me have it there after I bought it. Really? <laughs> they, you know, I had to hide everything. Yeah? Ride my motorcycle on the weekends or, or my days off. I'd come all the way across town to ride my motorcycle around the corner and up the street and down over at my friend's house. I remember pushing that old thing up the driveway every time because I had to hide it down below behind their cars because it had no tags on it. <laughs> that was 1987. Yeah, I just, I just timed myself. But anyways, man. So, yeah. Not until I went to the Summit Boot Camp program. Here, I'm going to show you what I'm doing real quick with my hand, even though it's kind of nasty. But, see, I take them and I'm just I'm smashing them like that as I put them in. Okay. Once I went to the Summit Boot Camp program, it wasn't the prison, right? Where all the gangs and all that is going on. Where you'd be like, oh yeah, that's where you'd be, you know, inclined to get involved in da 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 to save your... Right? No, I don't roll like that. Thor don't roll like that. I had actually one cat come up to me once and tell me I had to choose. I looked at him and said, choose what? He said, you need to choose, man. You can't sit at the white table and the black table and the Hispanic table and then over there with the Christians and the... And the you know, the Christians and some of the strange cats. Not freaks, but strange cats. <laughs> in a joint, all kind of sit in the same area. I'm like, I sit wherever I want to sit, man. You don't tell me where I sit, man. You know, Thor don't roll like that. You don't, you know. I don't need to be boxed up around with people. I'm, I'm you know, I am my own man. I, I made that throughout the years. But anyways, I got mad respect for him. 
I don't know where I got, I ran off the rails here with what I was talking about. Uh, oh yeah. <clears throat> so like, when you go to the boot camp, the boot camp is all about, I'm going to get some cornstarch too for this, cornstarch slurry. The boot camp is all about um, a pro-social attitude. So they don't want to see prison tattoos, they don't want to hear prison war stories, mentality, none of that stuff, right? None of that stuff. What they want is military bearing. They want you to get your head back in the game. They want you to look at your brain, how it works, and they want you to just like leave there with enough tools and enough discipline after six months, if you make it in six months. Most, like, you know, maybe two thirds of the guys out of each platoon would make it in six months, right? You know, just a little less and maybe like 10% of the platoon would get recycled back to other platoons because they had more issues to work on. I mean, I made it straight through in six months, but it wasn't since I was like in a platoon marching up on the hill with them brothers, right? Because some of them cats from that jail, from that prison from, uh, yeah, Shutter Creek, Bull 1-5, yeah, 1996 to uh, 1997, man, all through the winter. When it was raining on the coast, and the, man, we can be in prison and look down at the ocean, man, and go out every day and work and do some good for the like, environment. We were doing salmon habitat replanting and tree planting, and like we work as a team. And just, dude, you know, we had military bearing everything down. We all look, swear to you, all, except for the big boys, we all look like this. We was all hard like this and lean because we had to work hard for three days a week and we had to PT every day. When? Every day. When? Every day. Do you get a day off? No. We got a day off because something, we had a super storm come through and, and knock out all the power and knocking things over and it was like really intense, right? But no, we don't get no day off up on the hill. Heck no. I heard they get days off now, y'all suckers. Y'all get it easy, I heard up there now. Get down and give me give me 50. <laughs> I you can break it up into three because I can't do 50 push-ups in a row either. But I want 50 in the next, you know, um 20 minutes or so. <laughs> or 10. You can do it in 10. Who can do it in less than 10? Somebody raise their hand. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> Uh, who says, who thinks they're a badass and can do it in less than <laughs> a minute? <laughs> Somebody, with the DIs are always pulling stuff like that, man. Well, anyways, it wasn't until I was like with a group like that, brothers who were just, we were just down for each other. Because what the difference was, is was getting our lives back, man. And, you know, even if you, if every man recognizes that, you know. Trying to get strong, get your life back. So we're. I'm getting these high pitched noises right now. I got this real loud one right now. There it goes. Baby. Anyways, um, they make me dizzy when they hit. Uh, yeah, it's a new symptom. Yeah, and the freeze. You guys seen the freeze? But, uh, yeah, that's what I call it now. I call it the freeze. That's when my neck goes like, oh, I shouldn't, oh, dang it. <clears throat> yeah, when does that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so <laughs> we're just going to let this simmer and thicken. And um, that's buffalo chili. All right, and check out new, uh, um, it's not new, but check out Den uh, Five Heartbeats. And I, and... Well, I'm going to see what we can do about, you know, having an old woman jump around my bikers room and up in the air and play some, you know, and hear that stuff and some big sound, you know, at the local yo-yo-yo you know, you know, because we all roll together and I know some peoples and they know some peoples and we all good peoples and we all like to have a good time, man. You know what I mean? So this is Chef John, a.k.a. Thor, giving my word out about um, this real um, opportunity came to me, um, the honor I got, um, the honor that I hear about that was paid to Sonny. Um, I said it on paper. Um, here, I'm going to say it for real. This is Thor. All right, y'all. If you don't know who I am, now you know who I am, a.k.a. John, you know, Chef John, a.k.a. Thor. 
thrown out to you know uh, Sonny and all the, all the clubs who were involved in this. I got mad respect for you, and that means a lot when I say it. It's not just like somebody saying it. I got you know what I mean when I say it. It means something, all right. It's like the brothers around you, just like the paperwork I said. When I say I got respect for what you did for Sonny, it's deep, man. All right, so Chef John, aka Thor, Buffalo Chili out. I'm gonna do a little short. I'm gonna get on. I need to get down and get. I'm. I'm geez, I did like 10 hours of work yesterday, and man, my right arm is failing. Ooh. Yeah, I had to go to the hospital today. It looks like I ran a marathon with hernia and handicap. My shit cracked. <laughs> <laughs> Shit is off the hook, man. Peace, y'all. See? Oh, it's just coming in the simmer. I put a roux in here and a cornstarch slurry. Um, I might have to simmer it down a little bit because it's got a lot of liquid in there. And um, I might season it up a little bit while we're on the show. Mmm, a little seasoning. I'll come back. All right, peace, y'all. Um, not much. Just a little salt and maybe a little bit more of the chipotle and maybe a little bit of um, sugar.